Amen. 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 Ask everyone to please stand. How many of you in here love Jesus Christ? truly love him. Let me hear you shout, I love you, Lord. Let me hear you shout one more time. I love you, Lord. Amen, amen. The scripture reading for today is going to come out of Mark 2, 19 through 22. Gracious Father, I come to you this morning, Lord, thanking you, Lord, for this opportunity to bring forth your word, dear Lord. Lord, my Father God, I pray and ask that you forgive me of my sins, oh dear Lord. Lord, forgive me of the ones that I have thought of and forgive me of the ones that I acted up on, oh Jesus, Lord. Lord, my Father God, I pray and ask that you allow me to bring forth your word, dear Lord, so that your people may hear what you have to say to them, dear Lord. Lord, I pray and ask that you open up their ears for wisdom, oh Lord, that's coming from your Holy Spirit, dear Lord. Lord, I pray and ask that they receive the knowledge that you have to them, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord, and as I bring forth the word, Lord, I pray and ask that I am convicted also, dear Lord. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray and ask that everyone out here that's looking for an opportunity, Lord, they see it in you, O oh dear Lord. If they're looking for healing, O oh dear Lord, they see it in you, O oh Heavenly Father. For they know, Lord, that in you they can find healing. They can find love, O oh Je oh Jesus. Lord, my Father God, I pray and ask that you have your way with this service. Continue to have your way with this service, dear Lord. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, today, our sermon is going to be enjoying the new. Let me hear you say, enjoying the new. Enjoying the new. All right. You know, some people have problems in enjoying new things. I mean, they just have a real hard problem enjoying new things because there's a lot going around them. And they'll pay attention to things that's around them. But we're going to go into the Word, and God is going to show you how to enjoy what's new. And what I mean by how to enjoy what's new, how to enjoy that new life when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Mark 2 and 19, we're going to start at verse 19. And it reads, Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot no long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. And on that day, they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk clothes on an old garment. Otherwise, the new pieces will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins. And both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. You may be seated. As I was reading into the word and as I was studying the word, um, there, there's, there's a lot been going on this week, and uh, it was it was kind of surprising because uh, I got word that I was going to be bringing forth the word early. Usually I say I got it late, but I got it early this time. And as I went forth on studying the word, God was speaking to me. And there were some decisions that, that, that I had to make this week because dealing with the word. And I allowed the word to continue to speak with me, continue to speak to me so that my life can be changed. Because every time I go into the word of God, I'm looking to be changed. I'm looking to have a new insight on life. When you go to the word of God, don't just go to the word of God because, oh, they say read the word every day. 
No, when you go to the word of God, you go to the word of God looking to be changed daily. For the word says, your mind should be renewed daily. You should ask God to renew your mind daily. And the reason why you want your mind to be renewed daily, because the things that was of yesterday, most of them was problems. So if you're going into the new day, which we're talking about wine skins, you have a new day. God has given you another opportunity. But when you wake up in the morning, excuse me, when you wake up in the morning, you thank God. You say, God, thank you. Thank you for watching over my family. Thank you for protecting us, oh dear Lord. Lord, thank you, for, thank you for letting me see this great day that you have made, right? We say those things. Some of us take, even take time to fix breakfast in the morning, right? But well, some of us. <laughs> but soon as you fix breakfast and you swallow down that piece of toast and the egg, you start thinking about your problems in your marriage. You start thinking about the problems at your job. You start thinking about the problems with your kids. Remember, this is a new day. This is a new opportunity that you have to start over. But when it says you put in old wine, what's the old wine? The problems with the marriage. The problems with the boss. The problems with the employees. The problems with your sickness that you know you had yesterday. But you are a believer in Christ and you say, I'm healed by, by his stripes, I'm healed, right? But then next thing you know, that next morning, it's a new day. You say, oh, I still got it, it's still there. Oh, Lord, I ain't healed. What a title no. What's ibuprofen? You know what, I need to go to the doctor again. <laughs> but we're not believing what we're saying. If we truly believe what we're saying, we will make those changes every day. I'm not saying it all is going to go away right away. But what I'm saying is you're going to continue to get better. And how that's going to show is your life, the way that you live your life will be better. But I'm not saying that you're not going to go through life without problems. What I'm saying is why add old problems to the new ones that's coming about? This is when it's telling us that the wine skin and the wine will be ruined. The wine skin will be ruined. What ruined the wine skin? The old problems. What is the wine skin? The new day. The new opportunity. You're bringing in the old problems, the old wine. Now the whole day is gone. The whole day is ruined. The way that we think, the way that we think controls what our life is going to be. Why do you think when people say, hey, put your goals on the wall, put them on there? Because when you see it, you're thinking of it. They say, hey, make a picture. I know Bishop did a picture of him in front of a Bentley, right? And for so long, a lot of people kind of like, man, he ain't going to get no Bentley. He ain't gonna get it. Some that was with him was like, yeah, he gonna get it. He gonna get it. But it was his thinking. And I bring this, I'm not just talking about materialistic things, but I'm just saying about his thinking. He brought forth what he wanted. Now if you want problems in life, then continue to think about problems. But if you want a life that has less problems, start thinking about the great things. Think about Jesus Christ first. Think about the good things. Think about the opportunities that you have, those new things. Start thinking positive. Don't think about what's being said behind your back. Now, when you think, now here's it come the way you speak. Good morning, Bishop. How you doing? You doing fine, huh? 
Bishop, sometime he'll call me. Hey, Brother Dale, how you doing? Oh, Bishop, many people up here, I don't know. Well, no, Brother Dale, you can't think that way. But, but Bishop, man, you just don't, no, nah, you can't think that way. So then I turn around, I'm going to call him the next day. Hey, Bishop, how's it going? He say, man, if I was complaining, it wouldn't do nothing. Or he'll say, if it was any better, I think I'd be in heaven. It's the speaking. It's what we speak. You know what? I got a job interview. Nah, they not going to get me because it was too many other people that was dressed nicer than me. But you know what? You ain't going to get it. Not because the way that they was dressed. It was just your mindset. You know what? These kids are bad. You know what? They're going to continue to be bad. You know why? Because you spoke that. That's what we speak. Whatever we speak, it's going to come to pass. I'm telling you, it's coming. You may not see it tomorrow, but it's coming. I mean, I have one. I know everybody know. Uh, I have one, El, Elshama. You know, we gave her a name out the Bible, so we thought she was going to be the, the best one. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> Help us with that baby. <laughs> I mean, she is wonderful. <laughs> See? It's what we speak. I mean, I know what I see in her actions, but I'm just praying to God as I continue to speak, she's going to be better. But that's what we have to do. And I know as parents, as parents, we get frustrated. But we got to work on it. Nobody's perfect. But if we speak more good than bad, then things will come forth. Uh, I was struggling. Uh, I, I've been struggling for the last uh, month and a half with decisions and all kind of stuff. So Bishop was like, hey, Brother Dad, yeah, I was trying to get in contact. I said, yeah, he just in between bills. <laughs> he couldn't get a hold to me. The phone was cut off. So he didn't say, oh man, dude broke. Nah, he just in between bills. <laughs> but that's him speaking into my life. He didn't say that I was broke. He didn't speak that up on me. But I was going to mess around and tell him, hey, bitch, I ain't have no money. But before I could say it, he spoke something positive. I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm in between bills. That's all. I'm just saying, it's the way we think. It's the way we speak. It's what comes out of us that determines in the level of where our life is going to go. What we listen to and receive. Let me tell you, if you're going to let somebody dog you out every single day of your life and speak against you and speak against your life, if you accept that, you're going to be just what they say you are. If you accept it, you're going to be exactly what they say you are. Um, I was uh, driving. Normally, I, I don't listen to uh, the radio. I normally listen to motivational speaking and things like that. I get on YouTube and I just be listening. I'm like, yeah, I can do it. I can reach the mountaintop. I can move the mountain. I mean, I just be listening to some Les Brown. Everybody know Les Brown? Yeah. Oh, yeah, great motivational speaker. But I was between bills, so I didn't have the phone. <laughs> so I was stuck with the radio. <laughs> and so what I'm talking about is what you listen to. Yeah. And I decided, man, I think the radio had dust on it. So I hit the radio, cut it on, and 97.9 the box. Lord, they had some... They had some music on there. <laughs> and as I was listening to the music, it was talking about killing. I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to kill this, and I'm going to kill that, and this and this and that. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I tried to turn around, I'm going to kill that test today. I'm going to kill, but next thing you know, 
so much stuff started coming out, I started paying attention to the words. I was like, man, is this, is what, is this what we're allowing our young people to listen to? So I said, why do they allow this to come on the radio? Why do they allow this to play to fill our kids' minds? Why do you think the kids are packing guns to school? Because it's being promoted. It's a way of life. Let me tell you, we cannot, br we cannot blame everything on our presidents. Our president is just like us, he's human. He's trying to come up with solutions himself on how to end it. But when kids are learning at a young age, how do we help them learn? With nursery rhymes. You put anything with music and a rhyme, it's going to sit. It's going to manifest. It's going to take that thing to another level. My kids are rapping and singing something. I'm like, look, I got to get YouTube cut off because it's on everything. But it's what we listen to, what we receive. And sometimes we can think it's no harm. We can say, you know what, it's no harm, it's just music. No, it's not just music. It's words being speaking into your life and if you find yourself grooving, you're like, yeah, I feel that. You know what? Oh, I want to, you know? And then, if you got your own ride, you like, I'm feeling it, yeah. You know what, I don't love her no more. You know, she, the other chick looked at me nice at the gas station. I'm just saying. Cause that, you know, the words is saying, you don't need her no more. You can get you another one. I'm like, Okay, let me listen to some country. You know what I'm saying? So, Sister Tiffany, I was listening to some country. Let me tell you. The old red Chevy, the old red Ford, and the dog, and the guy is having problems. I'm telling you, they are having problems. Serious problems. She just will not come home for this guy. <laughs> Won't come home for him. It's what we listen to. So I'm thinking she's not gonna come home. She went to the mama house just to get some meat. But I'm thinking she ain't coming home. Next thing I know, she's popping the door. We eating spaghetti. I'm like, thank you, Lord. All right, so we're gonna move on. Then we go to our actions. After I was just jamming, I get out the car, and I'm feeling myself now. I'm like, man, I don't wanna hear that. Don't talk to me. <laughs> what you cook? Or we walk into the job, we talk to the boss. You say, what? I ain't feeling this today. <laughs> I know she didn't say that about me. <laughs> Did she just, you heard her say that? Watch. The, I was just jamming 97. Watch this. What you say? The song just put us in the mood to make some actions. Now we acting. But we are Christians and we supposed to be new. If we say that the Holy Spirit lives in me, come on, if the Holy Spirit lives in me, and if we say the Holy Spirit is stronger than he is, then anything, if we say God is stronger than the enemy, and if the Holy Spirit is in me, guess what happens? I'm like, what you say, Joe? Man, I love you, man. You know, I you. God love you. You know what I'm saying? I heard all the good things you were saying about me. I ain't even gonna bring up the old problems. I'm gonna just say, I, I love you. I'm not even going to bring up what they say you said about me yesterday. I'm going to just say, man, God bless you. I love you. I'm not even going to worry about you didn't want to cook yesterday. You know what, baby? You know, I eat chili dogs, too. That's real quick. I love you. 
If the Holy Spirit is in us, When people say they learn, how do they say they learn, right? People normally say I learn hands-on. I learn hands-on, right? Let me tell you, I really learn hands-on. When I'm reading, it's kind of hard. You know, I had to read it like 15 times over, and that'd be like one sentence. But thank God that the Bible is speaking about things that happen in life. So guess what? I learned it. It's hands-on. So... If we're going to learn things hands-on, and if the new people that are not saved, they're going to learn hands-on. And how do they learn hands-on? They encounter a believer. They encounter a relationship with you who is the believer. So when you're trying to tell them to go to the Word, they're like, let me see what she's going to do. Let me see. Look how she act. Her God ain't real. Look what he just did. His God ain't real. See, we are a walking billboard. We are a walking advertisement to Jesus Christ. I promise you. We are. Our actions and what we do, how we speak, how we love on people shows the strength of God. See, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we can go into the hospitals and we can heal. We don't have to ask God to go. We just ask God to be with us and we go. It happens. Now, for some people, that may not have that opportunity to actually live in the newness. This is the first step. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. When we're making payments on our credit cards, right? We're making payments on whatever, phone bills, light bills, and we pay it online. Some of y'all have it in an automatic drive, but when we pay in anything, Amazon, Elijah, he in here? Every time you hit Amazon, right, don't it say, do you accept the payment? Do you accept the charges? Submit. I'm messing with Elijah. That's my Amazon guy. When you accept, something is being removed. Something is being removed when you press accept. See, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the will to want to sin is removed. The will to want, I'm not saying the sin is removed. I'm saying the will to want to sin is removed. Because now when you accept that, something else is coming in. Now see, on Amazon, it may two, take two to three days. You pay a little extra money, you might get there the next day. I'm not promoting Amazon, I'm just saying. You get the same day? See, I don't spend money like that. But <laughs> you can get it the same day. That's even better. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the payment of everything else, all that trouble, all that, all those things that you just, the problems, the will to want to sin, to do bad, it comes out, that's the payment, it, it leaves. God comes in. That's in Romans 10, 9 and 13. Then, just like she say, same day, I'm used to UPS, right? When you order something off UPS, they give you a tracking number. Everybody give tracking numbers now, right? Now you got to know that you are forgiven. You got to know that you are forgiven. We know the package is on the way because we can track it. We can track it with the tracking number. But you got to know that you are forgiven. You can find that in Ephesians 2 and 8. You can find it in John 1, 12 through 13. But once you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have to know that you are forgiven. 
Then comes the enjoyment part of it. Prayer. Now, you get your opportunity to talk to God. You give to, to, to give those things that are bothering you, those things that are keeping you down, you're able to give that away. You're able to talk to Christ. You're able to talk to God. And guess what? God will speak to you. God will speak to you. You just got to listen. You got to believe. Number four, Bible reading. How else do you know how to deal with problems daily? When you go to work, when you get a job, they give you a handbook, right? An employee handbook. Then you got a policy book. The Bible, that's your policy book. That's your handbook. Read it daily. Because you know what? It's going to help you with situations that's happening in life. It's going to show you how to deal with those who are fighting against you. See, it's going to teach you how not to give the enemy credit for what's going on in your life. See, we, we get away from the Bible reading and we continue to say the enemy is on my track. We say the enemy is doing this, the enemy is doing that. No, God is just preparing me. He's not testing me, he's preparing me. He's preparing me. Number five, fellowship. How else do you get your encouragement of going on in life? You have to fellowship with the believers. I hear so many people say, you know what? I don't have to go to a church. I can watch it on TV. That's so all I have to do is watch it on TV. I believe God allow us to be able to stream services on TV temporarily if you just can't get out the house for that day. Temporarily, but you can't get out that day. Or if you're in a position to where you cannot leave yourself, and some other believers say they love you and they just won't come get you. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to talk about nobody. I'm just saying how we are. We have to do better. But we have to fellowship with the believers. And the last but most important, develop a relationship with God. And all of these things from step one through five is in process of developing a relationship with God. But how else do you develop a relationship with God? You got to read. You got to read. You got to know how to deal with people. That's part of the fellowship. You got to learn how to de deal with people. I'm at the end of this sermon, but I just want you all to know, you don't have to be what people tell you you are. I know we talk about the new and the old wineskins. If you are a true believer, believe that God has given you something new. And the key thing is, it's not just for you. It's not just for you. It's for you to be a good steward over, but it's a blessing unto others. So just think about it. If you are a person that has Blessings just overflowing. But you're continually doing the wrong thing as a believer. You're shortening the blessings that's going to go to someone else.
Bishop, can you come forward? Our bishop is a loving and caring man. And I know I spoke about him so many times in the sermon. I'm not trying to lift him up. I'm lifting up who's in him. I need y'all to understand that if it wasn't for Bishop being obedient to God, my family would be lost. See, in the process of doing God's will, you can't help but be blessed. When you're doing God's will, you can't help but be blessed. Bishop, I want to thank you for everything that you do for our church, for our community, our family. And I love you. Please stand on the building. This opportunity we give you to make your kingdom connection through membership.